Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I shot and edited this video and how you can do it too. So the video you just saw was a showreel to spotlight a product for my other channel, Nick's Whip Shop. That's where a lot of you guys are probably coming from. So if you're here, welcome. This is a channel where I do small documentaries, short films, nature, storm chasing, science. It's about things I love in life, things that I'm passionate about that I want to spread the word about. So hopefully I will gain your subscription. If not, I'm glad you stopped by. A lot of people have been asking me what camera gear I use to shoot my videos. So we'll start with the cameras. The two cameras that I'm using are Sony's. There is the A6300 and the A6400 that you're watching me through right now. There's a few lenses that you'll see me use on both of the channels, Nick's Whip Shop and this channel. The lens that you'll see me using most on both channels is the Sigma 16mm 1.4. That's what you're watching me through right now. That lens is so nice because that low F number 1.4 allows the background to be nice and soft and blurry. The lower that F number, the more blur you can get in your background or in your foreground, wherever you want it. The next lens you'll see me use quite frequently is the Sony 18-105, to and that is the lens that's attached to this A6300. Now both of these cameras have so much to offer, 4K, 120 frames per second, and Full HD, which I use quite frequently. I've spent a decent amount of money on cameras all my life, and I can safely say that these two cameras, I have gotten the most for my money, hands down. So those are the two lenses that you will see me using most. Um, every now and then I'll pull out the 55 to 210. This is a telephoto lens, a zoom lens. That's kind of nice if I want a little extra reach. And then every now and then, not very frequently, you'll see this thing come out. This is the 150 to 600 millimeter lens. I just did a documentary on Baltimore Orioles on this channel, and I use this lens quite a bit. But for the Whip Shop, Nick's Whip Shop YouTube channel, this thing is rarely making an appearance. Now for recording audio, there's a few things that I might do. Number one is this Rode video mic. This is just a beautiful microphone, picks up crystal clear audio, and I'll actually just pop this thing right on top of the camera, plug it in, and we're good to go. The audio is linked to the video. Uh, if I want something a little more specific, I might pull out this Zoom F1 field recorder and plug in the provided lapel lavalier mic that comes with this. So we'll do this, I'll stick this in my pocket, and you'll oftentimes see me have this uh, clipped on my collar up here. And that provides excellent audio as well. I'm gonna turn that off. It's got a nice LCD screen, you can see it's lit up there. And that is the gist of the equipment that I use. Of course, there's a tripod. There are various attachments that I use. Uh, for example, this Anchor external battery here. While the camera is off, I have this plugged into the camera. So when I'm not shooting, this is actually trickle charging uh, the camera itself. And you can see there is a cage around this A6300. This is made by a company called Small Rig. So there's a few attachments here and there. There's some extras that I like to add to the camera just to make it more easy to shoot. So today we're going to do something really neat. We're going to take one of these cameras and I'm going to film a product in 120 frames per second. Then we're gonna take that footage and we're gonna slow it down to 24 frames per second. So the general rule is the higher a frame rate is, the more frames that are happening per second, 
the more we can slow that video down without it being jerky. And that's one of the beautiful features that I have been enjoying so much with these Sony DSLR cameras. The ability to shoot 120 frames a second. You can get these beautiful artistic looking shots that I've never even experimented with until I got these cameras. For example, my Baltimore Oriole documentary that I just shot, much of that was shot in 120 frames per second slow down to 24 frames per second to get that smooth crystal clear slow motion. So with that being said, we're about ready to head to one of my favorite parks in Northwest Indiana, Coffee Creek Preserve. Let's go, let's grab the cameras and I'll meet you there. All right, so as you can see, I've found this beautiful place to shoot this whip. At this park, there are a lot of these nice stones. This is actually a waterfall and they have the pump turned off. Caught my eye because I think it's just a, a nice looking place, it's organic and uh, it kind of complements the colors and the whip. I have it all laid out and ready to go. I have here my Sony a6400 camera set to 120 frames per second, shooting in slow motion. The lens I'm using is the Sigma 1.4 16mm prime lens. So my settings are as follows. My shutter speed is 1 250th of a second because generally you want your shutter speed to be double that of your frame rate. My f-stop aperture is opened up all the way, 1.4. And the idea is I want the whip to be in focus, but I want the background of my surrounding area to be nice and blurry. I think uh, that's kind of one of my favorite things to do with film and photography is get a nice, uh, a nice shallow depth of field as it, as it were. ISO, I try to keep it as low as I can, but with the sun setting, uh, I'm gonna have to be increasing it steadily as we go. That being said, we're gonna be recording three, two, one. As you can see, we are ready to go. We're filming on both cameras. Another thing I need to mention is I am using autofocus. The A6400 does autofocus very well with the Sigma lens. So here we go. I'm just gonna hold it here. And I'm going to sweep from right to left. One, two, three. Very good. Next, I'm going to come over here, make sure I don't fall or die. Get a focus and then just kind of go around and do that again, maybe from right to left. Now I'm going to actually, I am going to turn up my ISO just a little bit because we're getting a little dark. And now I'm going to start here work my way back just like that now I'm gonna get some general shots overlooking the top of the whip with a little spin like this very good maybe a one where I'm down here just kind of moving in in the general direction of the whip like this very good now I'm gonna hold the camera down here and just get some some shots with very minimal if if any movement. One there, and I'm gonna take it, get a shot of this braiding here. Now the end portion of the whip here, I'm just gonna move it, just gently move it, just like that. Another angle, this side going down. Now a shot from kind of far away. Maybe get the lake in the back if I can. That would be kind of neat. And then maybe one where I'm doing like a little flyover, if you will. Like that. And the general idea is to get as many little shots as possible that'll look good slowed down, and it'll kind of resemble the camera being on a, a steady camera, even a tripod. We'll keep doing this a little bit here. Another one from up here. Maybe a little kind of coming in this way. Another up close going here. That looks good. We'll do a shot coming in this way. Try to I'll get the electrical equipment in the shot there. I like these shots here. We'll focus on the knot a little bit. I'm gonna move this out. Point it towards the light. I'm gonna get down here. Clean it off a little bit there. 
Now I really like to get these knots. So sometimes I forget how many frames 120 is. It's a lot. And I find myself going too slow, or in reality, all it needs is a little like that. I've been doing these shots too, where it's kind of hanging over the edge like this. And then I just, I'll start in close like that and maybe twist it or, or just pull straight out. And then we can do the same thing going in. There we go. Just kind of showcasing that knot. Go from this way like that. Very good. Nice, get that green in the background there. Very good. We'll cut there. Okay, so I've just opened a new project in Premiere Pro empty. There's nothing in it. This is what I use Premiere Pro. Uh, it's from Adobe. I didn't like it at first. I used to use Sony Vegas Pro when I was using a PC. But I've learned to like it. Uh, maybe that's because uh, I've just spent a lot of time with it. I'm used to it now. So that being said, a new project is ready to go here. And the next thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to locate my file files that I'm going to be using. So this is all 120 frames per second that you saw me shooting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to import that into our little bin here of videos okay and these are some other ones that were okay I think I'm gonna go ahead and import the other one of me cracking the whip in slow motion and lastly I'm going to need to import a song so this is the song that I've chosen it's called hyperspeed by uh, a group called evening land and normally I get my music from artlist it's $200 a year, and you can use all the music you want for any project you're doing. If you're making a million dollars on your project, you can use their services. You can use their songs. Um, if you're making no money, you can use it. It, it. For a client, it doesn't matter. There are other ones out there that I don't like because it, it's conditional. If you make a certain amount of money, they charge you more, or you can't have more than two YouTube channels. This, you pay the $200 a year, you get to use the music for whatever you want. And there's thousands of songs in uh, many, many different genres. And they're not sponsoring this uh, video. I just like them, and I use them. I have been for about three years now. Uh, that being said, uh, ironically, I have, I'm have i not using... This particular song is from YouTube, YouTube's uh, playlist of royalty-free music that you're free to use in your videos. And it, I really like it. I found it uh, through a YouTuber that I watch. He's a fighter pilot named C.W. Lemoyne. I heard this song in one of his videos. So this is it. So it's a real upbeat, kind of a dreamy kind of song. So I'm going to import that song into the project as well. And the first thing I do when I'm about ready to compose a video is I drop the song in first. I find a song I really like and I drop it in there. So there it is. You can see the waveforms there. And once again, this video isn't really designed to teach you how to use Premiere Pro. There's thousands of videos on YouTube right now that will do that for you. This is just how I compose a video, a show reel to highlight a product, which is a whip. So we have this song here, and of course it's going to be too loud, I think. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. <clears throat> Next, we want to locate our um, our video that I shot in 120 frames per second. And normally, you probably wouldn't do this whole shoot in one long, steady video. We're going to have to chop it up into sections. I did that to make it easier for me uh, in this editing and maybe make it easier for you. I don't know. Um, so this is the video right here. We can go ahead and import it into our project real quick. But if we play it, you'll notice that it's going to be in real time. As you can see, see, we are ready to go. We're filming on both cameras. And it's shot in 120 frames per second. So the higher the frame rate you shoot in, the more, the more you can slow it down uh, and it'll still be smooth. If you shoot at 24 frames per second and slow it down, it's going to be jerky. 
Um, but because we're in 120, we're starting high, we can bring it down to a lower number, which is going to be 24 frames per second. 24 frames per second is the recognized frame rate uh, that you'll see in every Hollywood movie. And the reason for that is it's the, it's the one that mimics our eye the most. Motion blur and everything, 24 frames per second is, is recognized as a, a, the most natural look. So that's what I use in all my videos also. I use 24 frames per second. If I'm not going for a fancy you know, slow motion thing like we're doing today, I'll shoot from the get-go in, uh, in, in 24 frames per second. We shot this in, tw in, in 120 so that we can slow it down and it'll be smooth. So once again, if we play it, it, it looks the same. It looks how it, how it is when it was shot. So we need to do something. I'm going to right click that video. I'm going to hit modify, interpret footage. <clears throat> I'm going to come here and click assume this frame rate and I'm going to type in 23.97. Uh, when people refer to a, something that is shot in 24 frames per second, it's actually 23.97. So it's close, but not quite. But that's it, 23.97. I'm going to hit OK. And now something magical will happen when we re-import that video. Watch what happens. First off, we see it's smooth and it's slow. And you can hear what sounds like dinosaurs having a low quiet argument so because of that you want to take your audio and just mute it because it's worthless unless you're going for that slow motion uh, Godzilla fight scene okay um, so there there's that the next thing we need to do is we need to go through this whole giant clip and once again most of the time if you're gonna be making these videos most of the time when I make them I just hit record 120 frames per second get a certain shot and then I stop I don't do this f one flowing thing I did that so you guys could see and, and, and once again so that it would be easier for me so I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna find a bunch of clips that I like that we can play in the sequence so here it looks like I'm getting framed up here and I want to find the part where I start moving the camera from right to left. Remember when I did that? Right there. Okay, so I'm going to shave off the front of this. And let's see how that looks. Still getting ready. Still getting ready. Still getting ready. And as you can see, I'm about to move it from right to left. Of course, everything is happens much slower when now that it's being played in slow motion. I'm just going to get to the starting point. There it was. Okay. Right there. So I'm going to shave off the front, move this whole clip to the left a little bit, play it from the beginning again. So there we go. I've got an animal with us this evening, guys. We have an animal. I'm going to put it behind my chair. There we go. Back to the video. So right there. That's all I want. I just want that beginning part. Of my uh, of the clip I'm gonna have it stop there I'm gonna cut it there and now this is its own independent little clip now we're gonna look for another scene it looks like that's where I start so we can shave off the beginning and the beginning of that was just me walking around the rock to get into position for the next shot so this might be kind of interesting I'm going to start it there. And guys, the, the idea here is just we're just going through finding different angles and run-throughs that would look good in a sequence. That's kind of cool. I like that. It's a little wobbly, but we'll be able to correct that in a few minutes with a, an effect. So there's another clip. And get rid of this. What did I do next? Okay, now I'm going over here. <clears throat> and I think this is when I, yeah, I started at the heel, so we'll wait till I'm in focus. All right, I'm in focus there. I'm gonna shave off the beginning, and then I pulled the camera back. Watch this. All right. Okay, so there's the beginning running through there. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. 
I really like that. Okay. Right there, and we'll stop it there. And that'll be its own clip in and of itself. I like that too. And you'll see things, I mean, I should speak for myself. A lot of the times when I do this, uh, the shots that I thought were so great, sometimes they're not. And the ones that I was like, well, I'll just get one more shot for the night. And that one makes it. And the other ones that I prepared myself and took too much time to get in position for, don't make it. Don't make the cut. So let's see what else we got here. What else would look good? So this is me walking over to the other side of the rock. I don't really, yeah, okay. I don't really like the way those turned out. I can already tell. That's why we got more. Okay, let's see that. Nah, not a fan of that. Let's keep going. I do like that ease in there. I think that would serve as a good video for the ending, or a good clip to put in the end. When it's kind of like, okay, we just did a show reel of this whip. This is what we just got detailed images on, and you're fading in. I like to do that. I'm sure you've seen it in other videos on the whip channel. Okay, that's cute. That's cool. You see that? Just a fade in. I like that. Or a pan in. Excuse me. Yeah, that'll be its own clip too. We'll move that over. Okay, so that's good. And now I'm doing one, another one of these for safety. Getting multiple shots. If you have an idea, it's good to go through it a few times. Okay, this is this is when I was doing the stationary shots with no pan, no motion. I'm in in post seeing that I don't I'm, I don't care for that. I like the motion. That's kind of the whole point of this video, really, to be able to hold the camera in a run and gun motion, no dollies. All right, let's see. So, yeah, nope. Now I'm getting to position for the next shot. So there's a nice shot of the end of the whip. So we'll start there and see how that looks. All right, I'm still getting into position, waiting for my focus. Okay, so we'll go back just a few frames, doing this with the left arrow key to go frame by frame. And now let's see how that looks. Nope, I'm still getting into position. You think that I'm starting and I'm not. All right, I think that's the starting point. And we'll start it there. Shave off the front, let it play. There's a nice shot of the, the fall hitch. This is called the fall hitch of the whip, the end part. Okay. We'll call that another clip see what else we got and let's scrub through here into position that's kind of nice get some shot of the braiding of the middle part of the whip I think we can do something with that crazy cats shave off the front of that okay that's a nice steady shot. I really like that. That That's going to be a clip too by itself. Let's see what else we did. This is kind of nice. Maybe. Yeah, I like that. So, it's not really... It's one of those shots where... Yeah, we'll shave off the front there and then just play through it. It's one of those shots where you can't really see any crazy details, maybe the end of the knot, but it kind of... It's more of that artistic shot that's like, you know what's there. Maybe some foreshadowing. You, you know what part you're, you're looking at, but... I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. You get the idea, I hope. It's just variety. So this is an interesting shot. This is like a flyover shot, kind of. So it starts about here. It's really slow, though. Remember when I mentioned in the video that 120 frames a second is it's fast record. It's a fast frame rate. Okay. Well, maybe we can use. I don't know, the beginning's too long. It drags on, but maybe. Maybe we'll start it here. Or here. Or we won't use it at all. You know. 
I don't think we'll use it at all, actually. I don't like it now. So all this nonsense is me getting into position for my next shot, trying not to trip and fall. Okay, so that's kind of a shot of the central part of the braiding, the medium-sized part of the whip. That's not bad. That's all I want. Keeping these clips short. You don't want one to, dr or I, excuse me, I don't want one to drag on for too long. When I pull the camera away real fast, that's me relocating for another shot. Let's see what else we got. Some more of this kind of, eh, I don't know. It's kind of cool. Mm. Mm. Let's see if we start it here. We're going to be putting an effect on all of, most of these clips called Warp Stabilizer. Basically what that is, yeah, I don't like this shot. Basically what that is, is it's a stabilizer. So if your shot is just a little bit shaky, a little bit, it, uh, okay, this is what I want. It stabilizes it. We'll get, we'll get into that in a minute. I wanted a shot of the braiding there. Okay. So it looks like it starts about right here. Pulling back. I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay, and we'll cut it there, and I think the shot that would look good after that, we'll hold that thought on this section here. There's the shot of the fall. You remember I mentioned the fall hitch? Yeah, this shot here, I think, would go well directly after this shot. So now we're kind of starting to put the pieces of the puzzle in place. So now let's see how those look back to back. We got this shot here. And we got immediately into that one. But I think that second shot should probably start where it's centered right over the fall hitch. Right there, going into that. Because it's kind of like going back and then going forward. Yeah, see, I stopped moving there. That's not good. Actually, I don't want to do what I just did. So we'll see how that looks. Right there. Yeah, that is what we'll do. So there's two clips there that are going to be joined together in the composition. And now let's go back towards the first clip. So there's that one. And I think the one that would look good directly after that would be this one. So move this over here. And I'm just kind of compiling these things together. Just seeing what works together as far as the, the clips go okay so here's the first one and we're about to drop these over the music once you get the music playing in the background it starts really opening up the the composition it starts it's like putting a stain or varnish on a table you just built you know it starts to pop the contrast and everything just starts to feel great that's the whole point of putting the song in to begin with it helps you once you've established the clips that you want to use it helps you um uh com compose really helps me anyway to hear that music is kind of like it's great all right so the next thing we're going to do is i'm going to take those two clips that i think would be good for the beginning and we're just gonna I'm actually gonna move this uh, out of the way a little bit so it's not interfering with the clip Make that bigger so you guys can see it, the waveforms. And I'm going to move those two groups to the beginning in here. And now we'll, we'll be able to see this with music. Watch this. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim these up just a little bit to make them fit as if it's two cameras. I'm, I want it to look like I have two cameras going, even though it's two different shots. So we're going to do that. Bring down the music a little bit, the volume. Okay, so I think I want that to end about right here so it looks like we have a camera too, and we don't. So right there I think would be good. So we're trimming off the front of that. We trimmed, trimmed off the end of this clip and the front of this. So now I'm going to join those two together end to end. And then yet 
we want this to be I think I want this to now let's see how it looks that's getting better but I think we need to trim off a little bit more of that second clip to beginning just so it's a more seamless transition Okay, now we'll shave off the end of that because we don't want each we don't want any particular clip to drag on too long. So now I'm reaching out for my my other two clips that I stacked together. I think those would fit well in the sequence next. So let's see how that looks all together. trim off the beginning of that to shorten it up Let's see how it is again another thing I like to do is I kind of like to transition clips on different hit points of the song if that makes sense so so right there would be a good place to introduce the other clip going with the beat of the song and we can do the same thing for that one just have that carry out a little bit more just for the sake of being on beat with the song I think that adds a nice little thing to the video yeah that's good okay and that doesn't need to go on forever either and that's all this is. I'm just I take these clips and I'm moving them around and I see what looks pleasing really. Actually, we could trim off the end of that and we could once again go with we could once again go with the uh, with the music, the beat. And then there is another one. We're going to trim off the end of that. And now we can go hunting for another clip that would look good next in the sequence. And I'm, I only go for a show reel of a product, maybe 15 to 20 seconds in the intro of a video. That's all I'm looking for. I like that. Which one was this? So this is the one that I'm sticking at the end, okay? We're already up to 30 minutes. Wow. Okay, that that one's going next because I want some close-ups of the central portion of the whip. If you guys want to order a custom whip like this one, visit nickswhipshop.com. I make custom whips. All right, there we go. That's kind of nice, but it's just it's too vague. It's too distant. It kind of doesn't uh doesn't show enough in my opinion and then we have a whole bunch more here that we haven't even been through yet I don't think we're gonna need any of it though okay that that's one I want I want to showcase that knot a little bit all right so I think that's a good I'm gonna split this actually because there might be some stuff I want over here instead of just deleting it and I'm gonna find a good starting point and I'm moving the camera all over the place here because I think I'm just getting set Okay, that looks good. That spin there. I'm going to shave off the front. That looks good. It's going to have to work. So let's put that in the composition. And let's play it from the beginning. Whatever song you choose for your videos, you're going to have it stuck in your head for uh, all night. It's going to be the soundtrack to your dreams, probably. That's what happens to me. <laughs> A little bit late on that hit. Did you see that? Or 
Or was it just my laggy computer because I'm doing a screen recording? That's probably what happened. I think we're okay. And then we'll do, go to the next one. And then we'll, see I'm just going with the music. I cut it there. And there's our not shot. Our not shot. Whoops, too far. Command Z. Now it is a little bit late, so I need to shave that off a little bit. Yeah, just uh, right about there. Cut that off. And then we'll take the rest of it, move it over a little bit. We'll see how that works. Okay, see that black flash there? It's because the clips weren't end on end. On end. Let's see, it's a little bit it's not centered and you can kind of cheat this a little bit but not too much if I was uh, shooting in 4k a higher resolution you could get away with this more but because we're in 1080 full HD um, you can't do as much as you w would be able to so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger just a tiny bit this is a way to cheat this a little bit essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking this whole clip zooming in a little bit and I'm moving the center to where it looks like it's framed up a little bit I don't I try not to do this a lot, but I'm doing it right now. now you can actually see I didn't get that perfect. You can see the bottom of the, the black part, meaning it's not centered perfectly. I don't know about that one, guys. Doesn't feel good. So let's go through. I'm just going to go ahead and get things where they need to be for the sake of time. Yeah, that's redundant shot. That's all we'll do. It doesn't need to be long. It just needs to be kind of a... Uh, get the viewers excited for what they're about to see. Or purchase. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're showing in a video, just... Make it look nice. Hopefully it already looks nice. Okay, I like that. I think that's good. But once again, I'm going to make that last video transition. I'll go with the music. And then boom. And then it'll just fade to, um, to black. And the way I'll do that is in the effects. I'll go into um, dip to black and just lay that over there. I'm also going to do a dip to black in the beginning, so it, um, oops, so it uh, just fades in from black. Really, I'm just going to make that a, a little real fast. Yeah. Okay, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to start doing some correction to the colors and adding some transitions. Uh, so what I did here at the end is I added a few clips, just using the same procedures that I had been using. Okay, so this is the end. Just some action shots of the product. And 
then it just kind of fades out. So that's going to be the end of this little show reel. So um, now I'm going to do some stuff with the color, some color correction. I'm going to do that with something called an adjustment layer. So down here in the bottom left, click that little piece of folder, that uh, click that little new item, and then we're going to do adjustment layer. Hit OK. I'm going to drag this over the clips that I want to affect here. So now this little adjustment layer, everything underneath it is going to be affected. So now see how this the ground is too, uh, too dark. So I'm going to hit the shadows slider. Look at that, I can bring them back. I don't want to do it too much because it gets noisy, it gets grainy. So that's just a modest amount. And then I'm going to take the highlights, just bring down the sky just a little tiny bit. I'm getting a lot of greens in there. So we can go a little bit more pink. And we can mess with this a little bit, give it more of a sunset look. I kind of like that. And we can toggle this on and off to see what we did. See that? Just brightened everything up a little bit. I might do something similar to this, but now we're gonna do. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take all those clips that we just did, and I'm going to create another adjustment layer. So new item, adjustment layer. Okay, and now I'm gonna put one over all of those clips from the beginning. Same thing, and now what I do to this adjustment layer, it's gonna affect all these clips. So let's see here. I'm going to go over here. I'm sensing a lot of blue. Not sensing. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of blues that I, I don't really like. So I'm going to take the slider and just move it opposite the blues. And see that? We get a nice, uh, a more of a, a more calm, um, warmer tone. And we'll see how it looks through and throughout. I already like that. There's more. You can see the tan on the rocks. This is without it. See that? Just too overly blue. And then with what we just did, you can see that tan. I'm the kind of photographer and, and filmmaker that I shoot it as natural as I can, make sure my white balance is set and all that exposure. And then I'll come in here and I'll literally just you know slide these things around and, and just do what looks good. Or I'll use something known as LUTs, lookup tables. A lot of free lookup tables out there online you can use. But anyway, let's see how this looks. Each clip might be a little bit different, but I think it's gonna work for most of them. <laughs> So see that it's a little bit green here. You can just see it in the rocks. It's something you can recognize just from doing this. So I see a lot of green in the rocks. So I'm just going to pull that a little bit to the right. Just a tad bit. Maybe a little bit more to the right there. I'm going to bring down the shadows just a tiny bit. Let's see where we're at now. I think I went too crazy with the, the pinks. And bring those back to zero. Okay. So, okay, so I can see here that looks pretty good. Working my way through it. I still see quite a bit of blue in this shot, so I'm like, I'm gonna actually click on the clip itself and I'm gonna do a little bit more even so instead of just the adjustment layer I'm gonna have some of um, some color correction on the clip and this adjustment layer so that's what we're gonna do so I'm gonna take away some of that blue there we go that's much better much much uh, more organic looking natural looking <laughs> So this clip, uh, it's a little tiny bit bright for me. I'm going to pull down the brightness. That looks pretty good. And maybe bring the shadows down just a little bit to crispen it up. Here's without, here's with. Just subtle differences. And then I'm going to take everything and I'm going to just increase the saturation a tad bit and see where that gets us from the beginning again. <laughs> So 
So that one doesn't really have enough blues. It's a little too tan, so I'm just gonna slide that to the left ever so slightly. Uh, maybe the same with that, just a little bit out of the tan there. Maybe, oh man, it's just such a subtle thing. take this eh, it doesn't need anything I don't think shadows can bring them down just a little bit you can't really see the detail in the whip this is just more to more so to show the tape or how it gets big to small it's something that's important uh, for a, a bull whip to crack properly it, it needs to go from big to small in a gradual fashion okay cool I'm, I'm pretty happy with that and now what we're going to do is we're going to do some look through and see if we want any transitions. I don't think I will actually for this one. Okay, now I'm going to do this. See, this is this is a stationary shot. Nothing's moving. It's just me standing in this little uh, stage area or whatever you call it. I don't, I don't know what this is. And by the way, there's a little too much. I'm just going to bring more greens into that, just sliding it to the green area like that. The green slider, the tint. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to select these two clips, which is actually one that I've broken up. Uh, they're both selected. I'm going to right click and hit nest and that's going to turn them into one clip. Now I'm going to go to the beginning here and this is stuff that you guys can find more detail on in, in other videos out there. Like I said, this isn't like an in-depth tutorial on how to use Premiere Pro. I'm going to go up to effects and I'm just going to ease in a little bit. Okay, so we'll start here and then all, all the way to the end I'm just gonna ease it in like this and then we'll go whoops right there that's pretty good so this is what it's gonna look like it's just gonna fit um, just zoom in see that just gives it some more interesting features so that's good the next thing I want to do is show you what I was talking about earlier the warp stabilizer I'm gonna pick a clip that's a little bit bumpy and then I'm gonna apply the warp stabilizer to it for you guys to see the before and after so here's before I'm sorry we're gonna actually use this one so here's the before see there's some a little bit of jerkiness in there and we're gonna be able to get rid of it with this effect called warp stabilizer right there drag and drop it on the clip itself what Warp Stabilizer does is it stabilizes and it uses uh, a technique where it takes the uh, video clip itself and it kind of stretches it and just warps and bends different parts of that video clip uh, so that it appears to be shot uh, more stable. And it kind of allows the edges to move freely so the trade-off is you zoom in a little bit. It's it's Whatever shot you get, it's it's a little bit digitally zoomed in to avoid seeing the black edges of the clip moving freely. To my understanding, that's what's going on. Um, so it works pretty well. And even a shot that's shot very well, stabilized, I usually will throw one of these on there just to push it over the edge and make it look like, like it's just butter, you know. So let's see how it looks. That's done rendering. It takes a few, uh, few seconds, depending on how long the clip is. It might take longer uh, for that effect to uh, 
to analyze and, and render the uh, the effect. So here it is with it. Look how smooth that is. I'm happy with that. I'm getting. Ex I'm so happy that I'm slamming the microphone. Sorry. So I kind of I might go through here and do that effect on different clips. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that with this video recording right now because uh, I'm doing a screen recording for you guys. I'm doing audio recording in a um, another program, so the computer won't be able to deal with all that. So just know that I am using that effect on various clips uh, in this sequence, and it's a great effect to use. So from the top again. <laughs> to the color here. Um, I'm going to kind of push it a little bit towards the greens, just a touch. See, I'm just sliding things around and seeing how it looks. That's better. You can always toggle your effect on and off, or your adjustments. So this is without any of the adjustments, adjustments that we just made, and this is with them. I think it looks better. Warp stabilizer on that one, you can see it very clearly. I'll probably put one on here too. do I don't think I'm gonna do any transitions there's a bunch of transitions that you can do with Premiere Pro uh, in the effect uh, yes in the effects I could do something like I could do various cross dissolves they call them like this but I just don't I am not a fan of those in, in this application but maybe I'll do one here at the end that might look good Or I could do perhaps a, uh, a dip to black is what they call this. Dip to black. It's a very common thing. That's kind of nice. Maybe I'll do a little bit more adjustment to this last clip and then this thing is done. And then it's ready to go. Contrast. See how the shadows are looking so you can really play with this stuff. You can really mess with it too much to where it's it's you're fixing something that's not broken, I guess you could say. So here's without, here's with. Just cleans it up a little bit. I think that looks good. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a dip to black on the end of that last clip there so it just fades out nicely. And that is it. That is how I create these short showreel style videos. Well guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope I earned your subscription. If so, please do reach over and hit that subscribe button. It means a lot and it helps the channel grow. If you guys have any questions about what I talked about today, maybe I forgot something very obvious, um, please do let me know and I will clarify that. Ask questions. Uh, try to get a discussion going below. What do you guys shoot with? Uh, what would you do differently? What do you like about this setup? I want to hear from you. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys in the next one.